I've gotten a lot of requests lately for some chopping instruction, so we'll make some random ass mix of veggies and rice, and we'll do a little chopping. All right. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. I make videos helping people to find health by eating the right food. And if you're gonna eat the right food, that means preparing it yourself. And if you're gonna prepare it yourself, then you ought to learn how to use your knife. And you don't need any kind of fancy knife. It could just be a $20 knife, but you just have to make sure that it's sharp. And then you need a cutting board, like this one, which probably cost me eight or nine dollars at Ikea. We're not talking about a crazy investment. And that opens the door to all of these beautiful veggies and pico. So I guess we should start with how to hold the knife. You're not going to grip the knife by the handle like this and then just chop. That's useless. All of your grip and all of the useful holding of the knife is happening right here at this, this spot. I don't know what it's called. I'm not a chef. I don't care what it's called. You're just going to hold the knife here between your first finger and your thumb. Check out my chopping blister. <laughs> you could do all your chopping just like this with no fingers on the handle, but we're obviously going to wrap our fingers around on the handle, but the main part of the grip is happening right between your first finger and your thumb. So we're just slicing this sucker into nice, cute little slices, okay? That's it. Then take all your slices, turn them sideways, organize them however, and now you're ready to go. And we're just going to do this. And as we go, some people like to move the food into the knife. I like to move the knife over the food gradually. And we're gonna use this, these knuckles down here above your fingernail. You could pick one knuckle if you want, or you could use multiple and line them up, kinda. And we're just going to use that as our guide. Practice this maneuver. Push the knife against your knuckle and don't go so high that you accidentally nick the knuckle because that would be no good. So just find this controlled action and then slowly start to move your hand and you'll get you'll, the knife will be moving. See that? See that? We're going to do the same thing but with these peppers. We can start slowly and you can dice these up as small or as large as you please. And if your knife is sharp, the pushing down with your hand on the knife is not going to require barely any pushing. And all you're going to do is just gradually pull your knuckles away and you're chopping over all of this beautiful bell pepper and you're done. Some people like to use a bench scraper because they don't want to dull their knife by scraping the blade on the cutting board. Here's the thing, I sharpen my knife all the time because I use it so much. So the action of dropping the knife and picking up the food in a different way or using the back of the knife, which is useless in my opinion because it doesn't sit flat so you're not gonna scoop the food up. I always use my blade to scoop the food. If you don't like that and you think it's bad chefing, well, that's great, because I'm not a chef. <laughs> Let's keep going. Here we got a poblano pepper. All we need to do is make it so that the core inside of here is not inside of here anymore. So you can cut it open, you can cut the side, we could go like this and sort of cut one side of it and then start to sort of uh, slowly cut around this core. A poblano has a pretty small core compared to the relative size of the pepper itself. And then you can get the rest of this little wasted meat there and then toss the core. You can make veggie stock with the core, you can throw the core out, whatever. But at the end of the day, we have this big poblano pepper that we need to make into slices just like we did with the yellow pepper. And I'm just going to slide the knife through like that. And here we go. We've got some nice slices and again, the same action. You can make your slight your dices big, small, whatever you like. And that's it. And eventually once you practice this, I mean you can rock and roll here. And you don't need to worry about the consistency, the size of the piece. It's all food and you're just eating it. So who cares? How about a couple other little peppers? Here's a serrano pepper. All I do with the serrano pepper is, and the jalapeno is top it, toss the tops. The serrano, both of these you can seed. So with the jalapeno you can either you know, cut around the core like this. Let's just do it that way. That's a good way. And there you have cored it and then this is your garbage. And now take your jalapeno pieces. Be careful if you're, if this touching the inside of the pepper is going to make your hands hurt, then be careful. I'm pretty much immune to that at this point. So I'm not very careful. And you're going to do the same thing as we did all the peppers. Slice them, turn them, and away you go. And there's a the jalapeno. The serrano, you're going to cut in half like that. If you want, you can take a paring knife and you can sort of core out the inside, that spicy part. Uh, I usually don't bother, I just chop it up. 
If you want them really small and you're just trying to add flavor, you can cut them in half again so now they're quartered lengthwise and same thing. If you want to get really careful and try start practicing, you know, precision, you can really get some really nice thin slices by just barely moving your fingers along this thing. And you can see that I have like paper thin slices. That all comes with practice. And it's fun once you get good. But we'll just dice the rest of this up without being too careful. Let's do this shallot. A shallot's a little different from an onion, but I've just cut it in half. Here's where I'm going to take this, my right hand, which is usually another person's left hand because I'm rare as a left-handed chopper. We're going to sort of hold the shallot in one hand and then slice through it and make some thin slices. If I lift up the knife, I make a thin slice. See how the knife picks up that slice? That's super annoying and it's going to make a big mess. We need to keep this onion shallot intact. So every slice, I'm going to use my first finger to stop that piece of onion from coming up when I lift the blade. So that's why my first finger is, is lagging against this, the knife and my thumb and everything else is sort of guiding it on the other side. And then turn it sideways and again, we're just going to keep the tip of the knife down and dice through this thing. With an onion, it's usually a bit higher off the cutting board, so using this method doesn't work so well. So with an onion, you may have to start to figure out your like slicing technique or whatever you want to call it, where you actually are lifting the knife up and still using your knuckle to guide, but you're getting more elevation off the cutting board which for an onion you have to do because the onion's obviously much larger than a shallot. And there you have it, it's all diced up and you're very pretty, yay. So let's use that same technique for the zucchini here. Take the top and bottom off and we're just going to cut it in half lengthwise. Flip them and then we'll cut it again all quarter, so we're essentially quartered lengthwise. And now we're gonna use this same technique and you can just slice this thing up however thick or narrow you want it. Mushrooms are fun. We're just The way I usually do mushrooms, I leave the stem on, cut it in half, and then I'll cut this lengthwise like that. The knife's going to go through mushrooms pretty easy, so this is where you can go for speed. And this is a technique you're going to start to figure out where you're not really pushing down with your hand. You're just using your wrist to actually create this chopping action. So you just, that's it. So you're using your knuckle to guide it just the same way, but because the knife goes through mushrooms so easily, when you're starting, of course, you can do this, right? You can do it the way we were doing the other stuff and just take, it on, take your time and chop it up like that. But eventually, it's much faster to chop through a mushroom like that and just be done with it. So again, take the mushroom. I leave the stem because that's good meat. Cut it that way. and you're done. So it takes a second or two to chop a mushroom. All right, let's do a couple Roma tomatoes. With these, you got a couple options. You can do it how I do pico, which is sort of the fancy way. I always take the top off, and then I'll take the bottom off, and then I'll slice right through the side and slowly turn around this core in the middle and take the core out. The core is the seeds and the guts. If you want a drier sort of diced tomato, you want to get the core out. If you don't care, then you don't care. This gives you a nice meaty piece of tomato. And now you can sort of slice this into strips, turn it sideways, and do the same as always. Guide it with your knuckle, and away you go. And then you can take the top and the bottom, cut around this little stem part right there, and you can use the entire tomato except for that little square piece of stem. Here's the bottom, I'll cut it in half, turn it, and dice it up. Here's the second tomato, so now this one, if you don't want to take the core out, then you can just cut it in half, and then all slice it lengthwise, organize them, and then same thing. You can either keep the knife down and do that, you can slice it like this, so these are going to be obviously a wetter tomato and a bit bigger chunks. So that's the difference between the two there. And again, no waste. 
Okay, perfect. Spinach, I'm not that careful with. I just throw down the spinach and just roughly sort of chop it. Often I don't even bother chopping it. Don't be afraid to make a mess. It's, it's gonna happen anyway. All right, I've got a few olives that I'm gonna use as my little topper condiment to give me some flavor. Let's clean off our knife. And with the olives, you can just slice them like this and be careful that you don't slip or you can half them and get a flat surface which is a little safer and then dice them just like we've done everything else. Okay, so that's it. Let's saute this up and we'll just throw it with some rice. Maybe put some spices in there and we're done. All right, all I did was throw a little bit of water in here so I know the temperature of the pan. I can see it's hot. So let's just dump everything in. That's a lot. And we're gonna just let this saute, keep stirring it around and the veggies will let all their juices out. Of course, you know, I cook with no oil so this might get a little bit dry and if it does and it isn't yet, then you can just add a little bit of water. All right, we gotta give it a little flavor, so I'm just gonna throw in a couple teaspoons or so of no salt seasoning, and maybe a teaspoon or so of granulated garlic. And these are looking pretty nice. I don't want them to saute too much. I'm just wanting to get them tender so the flavor pops. So here I've got some leftover brown rice that I cooked up earlier for a cooking show. All right, let's dump in that spinach and keep it stirring. And remember, if you need to add a little water, keep it from sticking, no problem. Okay, let's eat this. This is like the perfect healthy dinner. And so simple to just throw this together. Mm-hmm. And then let's throw on those olives, sprinkle them on top. Or you could do pine nuts, or you could do avocado, whatever you like. And then check it out, we got the Well Your World SOS free sriracha sweetened with dates and figs. It's not for sale yet, a few more weeks, we're almost there. But this you can also drizzle all over. And of course, optionally, <laughs> optionally, we gotta get that pico in there as well. Because you know me. Mmm. So what's better than that? And we even did some chopping practice. I brushed through it pretty quickly. If you want more chopping like that, tell me what you think down below in the comments and we can do that. Check out this playlist here for some more of my healthy vegan recipes. And back by popular demand for the month of May, we're gonna do a 30 day challenge. So check out my 30 day challenge cheat sheet right here and you can set up some rules and join us. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.